led by Mr. Yoichiro Miyake, lead AI researcher, Final Fantasy XV lead AI architect of Square Enix, and Mr. Isamu Hasegawa, senior programmer at Square Enix. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Miyake and Mr. Hasegawa. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Isamu Hasegawa, and with me, I have Yoichiro Miyake, also from Square Enix. First of all, I would like to thank you all for attending our session today, and we are very happy to so many people in the audience. Today's session is called AI and Fundamental Game Technologies in Final Fantasy XV, and we will mainly be talking about AI and Visual Script pertaining to the technology used in our development of Final Fantasy XV. First of all, here is today's agenda. I will be handling part one. I think there are many of you in the audience who are still not aware of our studio or our products. So I would like to first introduce you to our studio and our main titles. After that, I want to talk about visual script which has been used very frequently in recent years for game development. I will talk about what it is and what sort of merit it holds, as well as its best practices. And Miyake-san will talk about a second half, AI technologies in Final Fantasy XV. First, I would like to show you our products. We belong to the studio that develops the Final Fantasy XV game and all its related products. First, please take a look at this video. the main title of us, uh, including animation and pre-rendering CG movie and real-time CG games, including smartphone and PC. 
So now, let's talk about Visual Script, especially Node Graph based Visual Script. In recent years, the application of Node, -based, node Graph based Visual Script has increased in considerably in game development. This technology is one that pertains to the game AI. And though I have never heard so many cases of its application outside the game industry, I personally think it would be quite useful in other fields too. So let's talk about this technology today. But before we get into node graph based Visual Script, I think there are many people who are not familiar with Visual Script either. So please let me first explain Visual Script. What is Visual Script? Visual Script is a script environment for assembling visual elements like blocks in order to write logics. Its characteristics are that it is readable and easy to use for development. Initially, Visual Script was not something that was created solely for game development. Its general use is, in fact, as a platform for education and for the use of non-programmers. To be more specific, Scratch, Broccoli, and programming are some popular examples. This screen shows the Scratch tutorials on their official site. Even if you have never heard of Scratch, I think you can get a general idea of how it works. Its main traits are that it is readable and it's easy to develop using it. There are various formats of Visual Script, but when developing games, node graph based Visual Script in particular, often used. But since that is a really long name and difficult to pronounce, from here on, please allow me to shorten node graph based Visual Script to simply Visual Script. This image shows the level editor screen that was used in the game development for Final Fantasy XV. Logic is written as a node graph, which consists of nodes connected with edges. The edge indicates the control flow and data flow. The yellow edges signify control flow, and the blue edges signify data flow in the node graph. The node data can be set in properties on the left side of the screen, or it can be transferred by the data flow edge. The processing order of this node is defined by the yellow control flow. In this tutorial, uh, in this example, the control flow first enters the if node and then the if node is processed. The if node receives the Boolean input data called condition from the uh, data flow to make a conditional branch. In the case of true, the process flows outside of the screen, like this. In the case of false, the process moves to the common dialog node on the right side. The common dialog node opens the dialog window according to the properties. So, this, that is a general overview of Visual Script. As I mentioned, in recent years, the application of Visual Script has increased in game development. Why do you think that is? But before we discuss why, I will first explain to you the general workflow regarding game development itself. When developing assets for game development, first, the concept artist draw concept art of the visual style that will be expressed inside the game. <coughs> for example, for those of you who have played Final Fantasy, I'm sure that many of you are aware of the concept art that was created by Yoshitaka Amano. Based on these concept artworks, digital data assets such as model data and animation data are created. It is then the job of modelers and animators to create these assets. So it's not surprising that these people are often called artists too. On the other hand, the job of the programmer is to create the game engine. As you may know, games are level scripts that run on the game engine and are built to make these assets move. And furthermore, it is the job of people called planner to create this level script. As you can tell by this workflow, when it comes to game, game development, programmers are the vast minority. So in this sense, the role of programmers in game development is quite different 
from other IT related to development work. As well, as you can see in this diagram, the scripts are indicated as level scripts, but there are also many other scripts. AI, user interfaces, visual effects, and animation assets can also be developed with these visual scripts. And of course, those visual script assets are developed by so-called non-programmers. This video shows another visual script environment, VFX editor, used in the development for Final Fantasy XV. We use this editor to develop visual effects in game, like fire and blizzard like this. This, off -top, this, this is off topic, but artists can easily edit parameters like color and immediately verify those results. The, fire, the color of fire changes to yellow, to green, and blue. In addition, please note that the parameters can be controlled by the other visual script like level editor. So, keeping all that in mind, there are basically three kinds of requirements when it comes to game development. Many non-programmers can write large numbers of scripts. Other types of scripts can operate in conjunction with each other. In addition, the affinity with native code is also important, since the game engine is written in C++. Exchange with the script and C++ program occurs frequently. So then, does Visual Script fulfill these requirements? I will now explain how it does, due to the nature of Visual Script. First of all, Visual Script has the following characteristics. It's graphical, and its, sem its semantics is simple. For starters, even, it even its graphical and simple semantics traits, you could therefore say that the learning cost of the language is low, and conversely, its productivity is high. Therefore, it fulfills the condition that large numbers of non-programmers can write enormous volumes of script. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this is the main advantage of visual script, which is probably easy to understand. Before I explain the other two points, please let me talk about visual script's componentization. Another trait of Visual Script is that it makes componentization easy due to its simple semantics. For example, let's say we have this node graph as seen in the diagram. The subgraph surrounded by square in the diagram is logic indicating the so-called MAT instructions, which conduct additions after multiplications. And since this logic is used quite frequently, Let's say that we would like to componentize it so that we can easily reuse it. Now, when you look at the graph, the square itself looks kind of like a node that carries control and data pins. But since Visual Script has simple semantics, where data and control flow through pins, it's possible then to extract the subgraph you'd like to componentize and replace it with a node node that invokes a component. This is componentization in Visual Script. On the other hand, you can also look at componentization the other way around. The componentized subgraph looks like an ordinary graph. Therefore, it's possible to generally consider graphs as component in this framework and invoke them from other graphs. This concept of invoking a graph from other graphs as a component is extremely powerful and at various applications. The first application example is nativization. For example, it's easy to cut out the subgraph that needs performance improvement and then implement it as a custom made node. And it's a controller that allows you to implement a MAT node with native code and replace the subgraph with the custom-made node. In other words, this is one of the main script requirements for game development. It results in a high affinity between Visual Script and native code. The other application example is making connection with other types of Visual Script. 
What a graph as a component requires is just pins of control and data. And since these are common concepts in Visual Script, connections are easy even with other types of Visual Script graphs. For example, invoking a visual effects graph as a component from an animation graph can be handled easily. And this leads to the other main requirement, that is its collaborative operability with other various types of script. Of course, in theory, these are all capabilities that are possible in standard script, such as Lua. However, when compared to standard script, the semantics of visual script is very simple. Put in a different way, you could say that its level of freedom is low compared to Lua, etc. And that is why, like I mentioned before, componentization and connections with other types of script is also easy. Next, I would like to talk about the issue that we ran into during our development and the solutions we came up with. I believe that these issues may be quite common in general when developing with Visual Script. I mentioned that the learning cost of Visual Script is low and its productivity is high. However, just because non-programmers can easily write large volumes using it, it is a separate matter whether or not the quality of the script is also high. When everyone starts freely writing Visual Script, with no controlling measures put in place over time, this is a sort of script that emer emerges. These sort of huge visual scripts are extremely hard to maintain, as you can probably imagine. So now, I'd like to introduce a few countermeasures we took in order to avoid these sort of huge, unmaintainable scripts. I believe that standardization is com commonplace for solution integration engineers. Since the skill level of developers are often diverse, it's effective when mass producing things with a certain degree of commonality, such as UI development. For the impo implementation of typical user interfaces, the format used is to drive the state machine with external input events like key controls, and consequently controlling the parts that are indicated on the screen. When implementing this typical UI with Visual Script, implementations are handled after deciding on the rules pertaining to the layout. Here, we have applied standardization by placing the input event left, the state machine in the center, and the UI path to the right. By doing so, the maintainability level was improved as the overview of the implementation became easier to understand. Moreover, even if one was not an actual person who wrote the script, it became much easier for one to find where certain processes were written when fixing bugs, etc. You can consider Visual Script to be one type of programming language. Therefore, the best of practices for programming languages, such as structured programming, or object-oriented programming are also effective. Like structured programming, we can first create multi-functional components using individual fundamental nodes. And then, write logic with the multi-functional components. It made the readability the script generally improved. Furthermore, the way of thinking was also effective for role sharing in game development. All the programmers then had to do was develop generic and fundamental nodes without implementing the same sort of functions on a variety of nodes. And by having the technical artists combine them to create multifunctional components, the planners and artists who actually wrote the script could easily write script using multifunctional components without having to combine large volumes of nodes that are not multifunctional. As well, as seen in the visual script image to the right, each of the individual UI parts related processes was compiled and encapsulated. Then, we output the UI parts function to the external interfaces. This also made it much easier for one to find the processes when extending bug and improve the overall maintainability. And that wraps up my talk about visual script. 
Now, I would like to pass the mic over to Miyake-san, who will talk about AI technology. Okay, I will talk about the AI technology in Final Fantasy 15. Uh, <coughs> uh, making AI work is very huge work for recently, so uh, Final Fantasy's uh, AI team is uh, like this, uh, uh, over 20. Okay, what is Final Fantasy is, uh, uh, as Hasega showed, so uh, this is a reality-based fantasy role-playing game. So many monsters, many bodies are there in the world. So uh, any AI is autonomous. They think by self, make a decision, and make uh, uh, behaviors by itself in the world. Uh, that is a uh, uh, movie. Is, uh, the all monsters is uh, all. Uh, body characters uh, has an uh, AI in the brain, so uh, uh, they can make a decision by itself. If they make a uh, uh, natural motion uh, in the complex uh, 3D environments, like this. Uh, and uh, Sega shows uh, all AI's uh, tools is uh, based on uh, uh, GUI node-based uh, framework. So. Uh, Engineers make uh, AI tool like this, so uh, game designer writes uh, node graphs uh, for each character. Okay, so I will show uh, so the overviews. Oh, recent uh, modern AI uh, game AI technology is consists of three components, such as meta AI, character AI, navigation AI. Character AI, is, uh, as you image, as you image, so that is. Uh, uh, brains of each character. Navigation AI is uh, navigation on 3D environments, uh, such like uh, finding a shortest path to find the best point to stand. Uh, Meta AI is uh, an AI of game itself, that which controls the game itself in real time and dynamically. Uh, for example, if the player is not good. Uh, at uh, playing, so the reduce the number of enemies. So, but uh, the the player is very good player. So, uh, meta AI uh, change the number will change uh, number of enemies or uh, uh, strength of enemies. Like this. So, by using three AI, game designer will make the user experience for game. At first, I will explain meta AIs. Uh, meta AI is uh, in Final Fantasy 15. Meta AI is uh, overviews the game in real time and uh, controls uh, uh, characters' behaviors. Uh, for example, uh, in this is a game player character is in crisis. Uh, the meta AI issues an order to a body character to rescue play play character, even if this. <laughs> Uh, the AI character uh, don't notice the player's crisis, uh, meta AI issues the order because uh, uh, the role of AI is make a good situation to the players. So I will ex <coughs> So in this situation, uh, without meta AI, the three AIs uh, uh, come to the rescue uh, player, that is a bad situation. So meta AI controls the number of uh, pr uh, AI characters to rescue a player. So uh, meta AI pick up uh, one player to rescue a player. Uh, that is, uh, the meta AI role is uh, make a good situation for players and a good user experience to players. Uh, that is uh, meta AI's role. Uh, next is uh, character AI's. Character AI is, uh, is the brain for each character. So basic is uh, the ga character AI in games. Uh, at first, I would explain what is intelligence. This is a fundamental picture of character AI. At first, uh, character AI has bodies. And he <coughs> has uh, the, in the environment. 
he must uh, uh, take care of his body, bodies. And he has senses, he gathers information from the environment by sensor and makes the actions as output to the environment. So, uh, artificial intelligence eco dynamically makes an, an AI action in harmony with artificial environment. But the difficult point is the bodies, bodies. So, a, a character AI has both mind and bodies, uh, like this. But uh, in the AI is a very discrete system, uh, such as state machines. Uh, but the body is very con continuous uh, system in time and space. So it is difficult to connect uh, the discrete system and the continuous system dynamically. So we set the middle layers to uh, connect to the <laughs> intelligence and the uh, animation system. So that the character's whole system of three component, three layers, a multi-layer, three uh, multi-layered architectures. The top layer is intelligent. Uh, I will explain later. This is called as AI graph. Uh, as Hasega shows, that is based on all graph is based on uh, GI tool. And body layer is like this. This is uh, control and manage the body status. And last is animation uh, layers. That is manage the all motion data uh, in real time. OK, I will explain the AI graph. The fundamental architecture is called agent architecture. That is very simple architecture used in robotics. At first, we separate intelligence world and environment world. So uh, AI gathers information via sensors. And uh, this is a recognition module to reconstruct the situation uh, of the game uh, world. And this decision-making module make a decision uh, for characters. And the last module is making a motion uh, uh, by following the decisions uh, made by decision module. And control the bodies, and the, that bodies has influence to the environment world. That, that is the information flows in these architectures. So all module is driven by data flow, that is data driven architectures uh, for a character agent. At first, I will explain sensor. Uh, this is a Gaura, the monster's name, so that is a, a, a vision sensor. The first cone is this is a, a field of view uh, in the front. This is a ambient uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, view or for the Gaura character. When the enemy enter this cone, uh, the Gaura uh, cast a ray uh, to, to the object. If uh, there is some object, uh, the ray is uh, <coughs> interrupted uh, by the object, it means the uh, Gaura cannot see the object. But there is no object, uh, and the ray cast to <coughs> raise the uh, arrives to the object, it means Gaura can see the object. That is the vision sensors. So uh, by using this sensor, uh, Gaura gathers the information uh, from the world. And next is decision making. In the game, there is seven algorithms uh, for game characters, uh, rule-based, state-based, behavior-based, like uh, the seven-based algorithm. Uh, be <coughs> Based means uh, means uh, uh, compo what component is con based on this the algorithm. At first, I will explain a uh, rule base. Rule base is uh, the control system uh, by <coughs> uh, correction of rules. For example, uh, this <coughs> uh, behemoth character behemoth is controlled by rule based AI. Uh, this certain rule is uh, <laughs> the rule-based AI, so that is orange-rich rule is uh, 
executed uh, currently uh, for in this screen. So by increasing the number of rules, uh, uh, this character's intelligence become uh, more intelligent. That is rule-based AI. Next, I will explain behavior-based AI. Behavior-based AI is used behavior trees. Behavior tree is most popular algorithms in game industry. That is very <coughs> simple architectures. At first, uh, game designer makes uh, these uh, trees. At the beginning point is root. The first, this is the first layer. Uh, this priority is selection rules. So the, <coughs> uh, the battle node is selected now. So next is a sequence. This is a selection rule. That means uh, the nodes can be executed in sequence, attack and hide. And next layer is arrow magic sword. That is also sequence. So all nodes is, uh, are executed in sequence. And the magic layer has lower layers random. Random means uh, the pick up the one of them. So in this, in this graph, uh, the window type magic is selected now. So when the, <coughs> the all nodes, after all nodes exercises, uh, the indicators will be turned back to the root. Uh, in Squenix, uh, the original state machine and the behavior trees uh, made uh, on, on the GA uh, <coughs> Visual Script framework. Next is state machine. State machine is, is uh, in 19th, uh, is the most popular algorithm in game industry. The each state has uh, uh, action data uh, for the characters. And the uh, situation changed, uh, the states are uh, changed to the next state. Now, for example, that is one of the examples of, of a hierarchical state machine. Uh, that green is the top layer state machine. And one state includes a uh, smaller state machine like this. And Squanks also made the state machines, uh, geo <coughs> visual scripting tools uh, <coughs> for game characters. Uh, state machines uh, is good at uh, steady control step by step. BBR 3 is good at uh, adaptive behaviors. So we want to use both good points. So the final two, in the final two, two addition making uh, techniques are binded in the one system like this. For example, a top layer is state machines. One state includes one behavior trees. Uh, one of the behavior tree nodes uh, includes a state machine. Uh, like this, uh, game designers can make the uh, deeper and the deeper uh, AI graphs uh, as they want. OK, this is a true image. So at first, that is the uh, nuclear soldier's uh, intelligence. A top layer is state machines. And next layer is here is behavior trees. And last layer is here is state machines. Is this example only the three layer? But uh, uh, in their development, there's many seven or eight, eight layers uh, for uh, more complex uh, <coughs> characters intelligence. Okay, I will some example. Uh, this is uh, one example of green lit characters AI. This is a uh, uh, behavior tree for these green lit characters. As a node, green node is uh, active node uh, currently executes for this character. Okay, next is uh, parallel thinking. So for this this node graph is for green lit characters. It's uh, two parts of behavior tree is uh, executed on parallel. So why shooting the enemies, they think uh, searching the next enemy like this. A recent game is more complex, so a more complex or a more high intelligence is required for character intelligence. So the, <laughs> the in this parallel function is implemented uh, in this tool. So last is navigation AI. That is very simple AI. 
<coughs> game map, game terrain uh, is, is represented as a networked graph like this. So uh, to find a shortest path uh, from start point, goal point, uh, we use a Dijkstra algorithm. Uh, but uh, Dijkstra algorithm is not, it's not fast. Uh, almost all cases, uh, we use the A star method. So uh, like this, so uh, we find the shortest path in heuristic uh, algorithm. So that is a navigation mesh uh, which uh, where uh, monsters can walk on. But uh, difficult point, difficult, difficult point to, for develop navigate develop to develop navigations to make a, uh, is to make a navigation mesh because uh, the game map is very large. So navigation mesh is uh, automatically made uh, on every night <coughs> uh, from the collision model. And in the morning, so the developer can see the uh, result of uh, generating navigation mesh uh, on the web through like this. So uh, by selecting the mode, uh, <coughs> it shows the difference between the previous and the new navigation mesh. And by using this navigation mesh uh, in the game, uh, each character finds a path to the goal. Uh, this is a very complex dungeon, but even in the 3, 3D, <laughs> complex 3D environment, uh, by using navigation mesh at A star algorithm, uh, each character finds the shortest path uh, in real time. So the character can move uh, in environment 3D to the goal. Uh, this is a navigation mesh like this, so the characters can move to the, the players. Uh, next is motion analysis. Uh, recent recent uh, game, modern game characters' body is very complex, so uh, the uh, right hand attack is very different, so much different from uh, the left hand the attack. So uh, the monster must learn uh, how his attacks can reach the uh, players. So uh, we set the uh, trainings. This is a training <laughs> mode. Uh, the behemoth, uh, every day, behemoth trains, uh, uh, trains his, his old actions. And uh, the red point is, is the place uh, the attack hit. So by detecting these regions and run this region, he runs uh, his attack uh, where he <coughs> where he attack reached. So by this using data, behemoth attacks uh, can hit the players uh, dynamically in game. Uh, and this <coughs> running is uh, executed for uh, any characters. So uh, by using data, uh, the behemoth uh, makes the good actions uh, in the battle like this. And that training is also for uh, turning. Uh, turning is very uh, difficult problem because uh, monsters cannot immediately turn, so they have uh, 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 bending radius uh, for each speed. So every night uh, we, we make we make the monster trains uh, turn and turn and again uh, in complex environment, and uh, automatically uh, uh, the graph after speed versus uh, rotation radius graphs. By using these data, uh, each monster uh, can can makes a smooth turn uh, on 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 the environment. Next is character environment. <coughs> Many components, such as meta AI, level, or characters, uh, issues a request to play a script. 
and many scenarios are prepared in game development. And Meta AI pick up the best scenarios for each situation uh, by evaluating the each scenario. The condition to play a script like this, so the characters, time zone, area, weather, story, battle, and bodies, uh, uh, by considering uh, all these uh, conditions, Meta AI pick up uh, the best scenarios uh, from all scenarios prepared in game development. Uh, for example, in this case, yeah. there's an easy relax battle so there's a very relaxed conversation uh, pick up. But that is very hard for us. So uh, the most uh, very uh, strict conversation scenario is, is pick up. So uh, Meta AI issues an order to change that. <coughs> uh, Meta AI is the best scenario in this situation. And in the conversations, uh, character's attention is controlled by meta AIs. For example, in this, this is the attention point. Each character is uh, the face, the neck, the face, 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 the the face, 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 or as the character is, as for example, uh, this is uh, feeding calls so to represent the situation in the dungeons. And that is a uh, representation of the weather conditions. So uh, when, the, it, when it rains, uh, each character is linked to the uh, weather uh, like this. <coughs> from, <coughs> from this point, uh, I have being explains uh, the game techniques in game. Uh, but uh, there's many AI techniques out of game. Uh, out of game means uh, pro game development process. Uh, for example, uh, logging and data visualizations. For example, Final Fantasy Navigation Mesh is represented in different ways. For example, that is, is the areas, the same color is connected regions, each other. So that region and that region is independent, so characters cannot go uh, in a continuous way to the, this point. Data visualization makes us check the, uh, the game settings uh, in game development. Uh, next is the logging system. So by collecting the old data, and the uh, logging data on the servers, uh, we can uh, monitor the game, uh, whole game situations on the server. For example, a PQS query. PQS query means uh, finding the best point to stand uh, for the characters. PQS is uh, the finding system. Find the best the, the system to find the positions. For example, such as find a position to attack for monsters, find a tactile position for bodies, or like this. So, PKS query, I'm sorry, that is uh, from <laughs> spell, so the PKS statistics uh, is correct, is, and uh, uh, that is that uh, represents uh, as a histogram of this gram. For example, some one query is a high frequency too much frequently called, that is, there's, we can notice there's some errors uh, for these queries. And also that scenarios, that is, a, that is a histogram of number of calling each scenario. We can check the, uh, the <coughs> uh, calling situations for all scenarios. And that is a histogram for uh, uh, calling animation. For example, in this place, one specific animations are called in this region. At last, uh, I will explain the ambient AI. Ambient AI, it means the cloud AI in the towns. Uh, in, in that town, in that cloud, so we can, we don't make the clever, very high intelligent AI. Uh, on the contrary, uh, we have uh, special uh, techniques for cloud AIs. We implement this AI on the object. For example, 
the this refrigerator has intelligence to control the crowd. For example, in this situation, table has an intelligence to gather the crowd people to, and when the players enter this situation, uh, the, this table pick up two people and uh, makes uh, they have conversation. And after that, <coughs> so when the player hears the all characters are controlled by the location, a table, or the object. Uh, it makes uh, the crowd actions uh, in a very light ways uh, without you no know, heavy process of AI. Okay, uh, that is uh, a talk, all of my talk. Uh, in this book, uh, I have <coughs> some article uh, for <coughs> Final Fantasy AIs. Thank you. In addition, let me talk about one more thing. As you may know, SIGAF Asia 2018 will be held at Tokyo International Forum December next year. Since some of you might not be familiar with SIGAF, let me introduce SIGAF uh, conference. SIGAF is the world's largest and most influential annual conference and exhibition in computer graphics and interactive techniques. SIGAF Asia is the Asia version of SIGAF conference and the annual event which rotates around the Asian regions. In the next year, SIGAF Asia will be hosted in Tokyo. We think that Tokyo is the best venue to achieve the best and the most exciting SIGAF Asia. Please consider contribution or join professionals at SIGAF Asia 2018. Uh, to more information about SIGAF Asia 2018, please see the following URL. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Miyake and Mr. Hasegawa.